Hi, welcome to another podcast from the Inside Energy series. Today we're going to be talking about uh, energy procurement and uh, I'm joined today by Ashley Gill who's in our solutions team and John Warwick who's our VP of operations and they've kindly agreed to join us and share the discussion and uh, hopefully get some of those important questions that you want to know answered. Let's go to our first and most basic question. What is energy procurement and who could potentially benefit from our service? Well, I'll, I'll grab that one because it's nice and easy. Um, so energy procurement um, is available to, uh, to actually both some residential customers, uh, small medium enterprises and commercial and industrial uh, companies who are in uh, locations where they have direct access to competitive energy suppliers. Now if you look across the states um, of the 50 states there are uh, 14 very strong states for electricity procurement and uh, and some more for natural gas but it really is a mixed bag across the various states um, some allowing uh, different types of consumer to access more competitive prices for their energy. And I think that uh, what's really important is that these consumers understand that they do have a choice and uh, they are able to check and make sure they do have the lowest cost for their energy prices. Um, and also that they've got uh, quite a few tools to choose from and not many people realize that it's not just about going to market and getting a price it's also the way that you go to market and the way that you can buy energy um, because things are uh, a lot more sophisticated than just doing a fixed price contract nowadays. John, why don't you get into describing some of the different strategies we use when we're looking at energy procurement contracts? Sure, so uh, first thing we do is we, we talk with our, our clients and figure out what, what their needs are. Uh, so some, some clients are mostly focused on you know budget certainty and uh, you know just having stable prices for a period of time. Um, clients might uh, have a limit on on how far they can um, make purchases uh, or do contracts. Um, so th the very basic co uh, way we can do energy procurement is, is with a fixed price contract. So that that would give you budget certainty and you you would uh, have a, have a stable price. Um, now, if we move to the complete opposite end of that, uh, we have an index price. Uh, so that type of contract is purely at market. Uh, what you do is you uh, contract with a supplier to have some kind of adder um, over the market price where the supplier would add all of their fees, such as uh, line losses and ancillary costs, and uh, sometimes they would put capacity charges in, in, in that, uh, that adder. Um, so what you would have is you would have uh, the you would pay the price that the uh, market sets, uh, and and then you would just have the adder added on, and uh, you'd be completely variable month to month. Uh, next kind type of strategy we can do is uh, block type purchase. <clears throat> so uh, this gets a little bit more complicated where. Uh, we can buy energy as a certain percentage of your load or even a certain quantity and we can do this at any month and we can even get more complex where we do it on certain hours of the day like on peak hours or, or off peak hours. Uh, so that, that type of strategy is, is um, helpful uh, for certain customers based on their, their load profiles. Um, Next thing uh, we can do is uh, we could do a more dynamic um, risk management. Um, and I think we'll get into that uh, a little bit later. So, uh, so John, I mean, it, just, to, just to clarify, while we know that there are um, options available right the way down to residential customer, it's fair to say that we, we really only focus on those uh, large to medium sized commercial industrial uh, organizations, right? I mean, we, that's kind of our main focus. Yeah, in general, um, I mean, we'd like to work with, um, uh, you know, as many clients as possible, um, but you have to have a certain certain threshold in, in usage where it makes sense to invest the time in it. No, that's, uh, that's quite right. And I think, you know, as we 
um, we'll get into a little bit a little bit later. It's definitely, you know, with some of these larger organisations, there is a lot more time spent um, on understanding those strategies, what their goals are, and making making sure they have that strategic energy plan put in place, so that you know they are understanding the risks that they're taking, that they're more uh, that they're quantifiable and that you have a procurement strategy which is going to meet those goals and and that's what we try and do is to understand those first and then wrap the various tools that that John's mentioned there to deliver uh, those particular uh, goals in the strategy. How do these strategies differ between regulated and deregulated markets? Yeah so um Energy procurement uh, can only really be done in deregulated markets. Um, <clears throat> so those will be those those 14 or so states that, that Dan mentioned, um, and those those states will be close to uh, what's called a, an ISO, an independent system op operator, like PJM, or you may have heard of ERCOT uh, in Texas. Um, so so you know deregulated markets are the ones that we can do procurement in. Um, for regulated markets, there are other strategies uh, that would be utility rate optimization. So looking through uh, regulated utilities rate tariff plans um, and, and that's uh, another long discussion. <laughs> and I think yeah. we, we will actually be doing a separate podcast just on uh, regulated uh, utilities, the rate and tariff analysis. Um, uh, of those available structures. Um, so uh, just keeping focused on, on the procurement side, one thing that is uh, important to note is that you know yes there are competitive suppliers that you can go to for pricing at any point in time if you're in a market which, which has that availability, direct access market. And I think one of the things to uh, never forget is that you also have a local utility that also has a set of rate and tariff structures. And it's really important when you go to market that you get the bids back from all those competitive suppliers, but you should always compare those to the local utility rates because sometimes you can actually find those local utility rates uh, come out at a lower cost to you. Um, so if you don't do that evaluation, you're leaving money on the table. And that's a really important consideration um, because I know that some, uh, some advisors are unable to do that because of the way that they structure their fees, like back-end fees and broker arrangements. Um, utility Regulated utilities do not offer that compensation mechanism and so those brokers have no interest or no uh, uh, motive to go and do that final check for you. Um, but it's important because, like I say, money can be left on the table there. So right. basically leave no rock unturned. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, many other advisors will just look at your previous contract or, you know, and, and just purely look at suppliers. Um, but it's really important to look at all your options. U utilities sometimes uh, can be more, most competitive. So uh, tell me, Joe, when you know when you're doing procurement for clients, when are you doing it? I mean, when when are you looking at? Is this just when their contracts end? Is that when you're looking to place them in new contracts? No, it, it, it's important to actively manage these contracts. So, uh, you know, just starting at uh, starting and stopping contracts when when they end, and it, it doesn't make a lot of sense because you're putting all your eggs in one basket looking at the market at a very narrow period of time. I mean, even if you're in a fixed price contract, say you do a 12 month contract, what we're doing uh, is we're watching the market for the next year and the year after that and, and waiting for opportunities uh, should the market fall. I mean, given today, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of demand destruction um, because of COVID. So there's some opportunities in the markets in, in, in certain certain uh, parts of the country. So it's fair to say that you know people need to understand that electricity, natural gas, they're commodities and they will move up and down in price every day and uh, so timing is everything to get the very best rates, correct? Um, absolutely, yeah so 
you know, if, if you're, you're just doing a procurement exercise where, where you're comparing, you know, a pool of suppliers and beating them up and just going after their margin, uh, that's not necessarily a good strategy because you're chasing after maybe 2% of the price. Whereas if you do a, uh, you know, market-based approach, uh, there's much, much larger uh, variances in price at, at various times of the, of the year. And it's fair to say that uh, that actually energy commodities are, you know, across the world, the most volatile set of commodities there are. Um, and and I think <clears throat> I think what's interesting is if you look at what affects commodity prices, it can be you know conflict in the Middle East, it can be supply disruptions uh, in oil across the globe. Um, and that will start to affect the price that we pay for electricity. Um, and the reason for that is that you'll find that if we look at the US marketplace, the uh, marginal, uh, marginal cost of generation, the price setter is actually natural gas now. And natural gas takes its pricing influence from oil uh, and the changes in oil price. So as we see oil prices increase, then we'll typically see natural gas prices increase. Now it's fair to say in the US that there's been, with the shale discoveries, a massive oversupply of natural gas uh, in the markets for, for some years. Um, and whereas we saw uh, back in 2008, we saw prices of around you know, $8 a decatherm, uh, they have dropped as low as kind of a dollar sixty a decatherm, and I think today, John, where are they today? Around kind of just under three dollars or around that mark. Yeah, it, 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 it's a lot lower than when I first started in the in the industry. I remember so, gas getting up to thirteen, fourteen, fifteen dollars, uh, you know, a, a, a therm, and it, it, it was crazy. And, and now, you know, we're one fifth of that. So, and I think that's that's interesting because. You know, if you look across what's affecting these these uh, commodity prices, you have to understand as an energy consumer, um, it's fine to do that to look at the commodity markets, but you need to recognise what you can actually control. Now, you can't control whether there's a conflict in the Middle East or whether there's uh, disruption at one of the main ports or or the supply demand fundamentals. You've got no uh, you've got no influence on those. But what you can influence is the way that you are managing the risk of your purchases into your facility. And that's very much to do with the way that you structure your uh, energy supply contracts uh, and how you, uh, how you manage that process. And I know, John, you've, you've alluded to uh, some methods, whether it be fixed prices for price certainty, a floating price to have that market full market participation, and those, are, as you mentioned, both extremes uh, both uh, you know very extreme methods um, and then we have other methods like the block maybe block and index even uh, methods to, uh, to to do this a more a more controlled fixing and then right down to this uh, dynamic risk management where uh, companies can really fine-tune their procurement so um, the analogy would be rather than going and operating on a patient with a hammer and chisel, you're actually doing it with a scalpel where you can really fine tune the way that you manage that risk uh, with both uh, fixing and unfixing available within a supply contract so that you can uh, manage your position, you can quantify a dollar value of risk you want to take and keep fine tuned within that. Alright, so getting back to like the more hands on side. What does our RFP process with these vendors typically look like? What are we looking for in these contracts? Are we just looking at pricing that they're offering us? Is there other factors we look at? So if we're talking about process, um, the first thing we want to do is educate, educate you on uh, what the specifics are for the market that we're looking at. So uh, you know, e each market is different. Uh, I'll give you an example in, in Texas you have to choose a supplier. There, there is no d default utility. So, uh, you know, that, that's completely different than, than some other states. Um, you know, in the, in the Northeast, like New Jersey, you have high renewable portfolio standards. So, you know, a high amount of generation um, needs to be from renewables. Um, and there's uh, high capacity charges. 
So uh, in New Jersey, for example, uh, most of your electricity price is already spoken for. So you're going to pay what what uh, the the uh, independent system op operator, in, in this case PJM, charges for capacity, and you may only have 25 to 50 percent um, of your price being variable and moving with the market. Uh, so there's we need to educate you first on, on what's going on in the market. Um, we'll give you a list of the uh, suppliers that are active in that market. Not all suppliers are national, uh, many are regional. Uh, and we'll look at the credit, we'll give you details about uh, e each of the suppliers, and uh, we'll look at where you may have contracts in place already with them. Uh, so we'll narrow down a list of suppliers uh, for you, and then we'll, we'll go and we'll set up uh, with those suppliers what 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 they need to uh, build a price for you so what the suppliers do is they contact uh, the utilities directly and they pay for your data your historical usage and they build models uh, based on you know your on and off peak consumption and your your consumption throughout time um, so once we have that set up uh, then we can go and discuss with suppliers uh, the products that they have available. Not all suppliers will offer the same products uh, and we'll just cater a solution uh, working with you on, on what best fits your needs. Uh, so when when we get um, the information of the suppliers we can now request pricing. We'll get pricing on one day, make sure it's apples to apples comparison and then uh, talk, talk to you about uh, potentially executing the contract, finding out um, if we need to negotiate the contract, get your uh, legal stamp on it before we execute, choosing the right day. Um, typically, the way a, a contract execution works is we get pricing in the morning that's live, and you'll have uh, up until the end of the day, typically about 4 p.m. Eastern time, to find a signature and, and get the agreement signed. Uh, it's fair to say that you know whenever we go to market, it's never just about the price and I think there's um, you know a few people realize that you know in our process there is both the uh, quantitative and qualitative aspect of, of, uh, of uh, procurement processing so uh, when we get those bids in yes we're looking at the the pricing but we're also looking at the supply terms as well and those supply terms which may have uh, additional risks within them uh, that we cannot negotiate out, well clearly there is a commercial uh, consideration to those which will add to the weighting of the final analysis. Um, so that's obviously worth, worth putting as well. So, no, but thanks for, thanks for running through that, John. So in essence, it's, it's as always, it's allowing customers to make the choice and that balance of risk and reward um, and all you know, our job is to make sure that they understand uh, what the risks are, what those rewards are, so they can find that perfect balance for their for their business. Yeah. So, just as a wrap up, what do you guys think are the top benefits that this service gives our clients? I think from uh, for any client, I think it's it's assurance. It's it's letting them know that their uh, energy contracts are um, their. their procurement is being done professionally, um, that we are helping them comply with their legal obligations through their um, commercial supply contracts, um, and that they really have uh, adopted the, the very best uh, tools and approach to achieve those specific goals that they have in their, in their, in their business. Yeah. What our customers like to do is make sure that they're as competitive as possible with their operational expenses. So if your competitors are doing this and you're not, then you're at a disadvantage. So we um, thank you very much, uh, you guys, for, uh, for digging into that a little bit more. Um, just to recap, we are going to have uh, a separate podcast that's going to talk about getting value from regulated utilities and what the opportunities are to do that and we're also going to have a separate podcast that's going to uh, be very specifically focused on dynamic risk management so we'll have a couple of podcasts coming up on those specific topics uh, in the near future uh, but in the meantime we thank you very much for joining us 
and uh, thank you guys. <laughs>